Good morning, everybody. What a turnout. I can't believe it on this dark and stormy morning on Monday morning at 7.30. I don't know if I would be here if I wasn't speaking, but uh, this, is, this is great to see everybody here, and I really owe a huge uh, uh, credit to Adam and Susie for haranguing and controlling all of you uh, to show up today, so they did a great job. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Marco Day. I'm one of the founders of Oxygen. I'm here with my two partners as well. They're somewhere in the room, Donald and Sean. Um, I'm going to start with an old metaphor that really kicked off this whole group. I'm a big believer in the strength and power of metaphors for communication. If for no other purpose than to help us as a group communicate what our business actually is. Right? Mining is a complicated business. Exploration is tough and difficult to explain in terms of risks, but when you break it down to a metaphor, I find it really helps. So this is one of my favorite. A baseball field is 70,000 square feet. The strike zone is three and a half square feet. Here's to finding the sweet spot. That can mean a lot of things, risk, um, real estate. For us, our sweet spot is discovery, and it has been the keel and the compass that has driven all of our companies for the last 15 years. Making that discovery, whether it's a true virgin new discovery or whether it's a rediscovery, it doesn't really matter to us. And from where we sit, discoveries are what drives this whole sector. Nothing else compares to it in terms of value creation. It is the engine that drives the entire resource sector, making discoveries. Back in 2004, we coined a phrase, we copyrighted a phrase actually called the science of discovery. And it has been with us uninterrupted since 2004. And to this day, it is Liberty's tagline, the science of discovery. And it is focused just on that sweet spot, which is discovery. One of the questions I get asked a lot is what is oxygen? What's it all about? And in its most elemental form, it is a combination of a merchant bank and a mining house. So a private mining house combined with our own capital as a merchant bank to create new deals. So we source new deals, we structure new deals, we put our own equity into new deals, all of us at Oxygen, not just the principals, all of us. <clears throat> we back these new deals, we then source the best management we can on the street Sometimes they're already within our group. Sometimes we go out and we find new management. And over the last 15 years, we have created eight new very first time CEOs that weren't CEOs before, that have been through the Oxygen family. We have had 43 independent, unique directors as part of our group's uh, uh, board of directors. So this is not a rinse and reuse and recycle kind of business model. This is Expand the DNA and the gene pool as broadly as you possibly can for every deal. So every company's got a dedicated C-suite, every company's got a dedicated management team. There's, there's no repetition, there's no overlap. So what that's led to is a skill set that is unparalleled in the industry, in my view. We've got a skill set that spans from early stage exploration to delineation of resources to calculation of resources to permitting to CSR all the way through construction and operations. And we have taken projects from the very infancy all the way through pouring gold. <clears throat> Sometimes we sell them in between, but not necessarily. It depends on where we think that value is going to get created. I want to talk a little bit about the mining continuum. We all know this graph. This is the famous curve. I think Pierre Lassonde originally uh, uh, coined this the Lassonde curve. All of these projects you see listed here from discovery to development to production are all the projects that have touched the oxygen group that have been responsible for creating all of the value that I'm going to talk about today and that our, our CEOs are going to talk about today. They all started at the steepest end of the curve on the far left in the discovery box. They all started there, right? That is the steepest part of the curve where you get the best return for the lowest amount of capital. Right? Then they flatten off during development and then they ramp back up again to another sweet spot which is production and cash flow. We all know this model. We have been militant about focusing on projects that are at the discovery stage and pushing them up that curve 
and either selling them at or close to the top or through the development and into production, right? And I'll talk a little bit about that as well. But we've never wavered from that model and it has led to a huge amount of success collectively for the group. If I put myself in, the, in your seats, your investors largely, I'm an investor in our own companies as well in a big way. How do you mitigate risk? Right? How do you manage risk as an investor in a highly risky business called mining and uh, resource exploration? The most obvious way is to back people or teams with a track record of success. Or better, a track record of serial successes. We have done it nine times since 2011. And if you look at the companies that we as a group have created, the family, this is it. You'll recognize most, if not all, of these names. They've all come from Oxygen and the group. And they span the whole spectrum from very early stage to cash flowing producers. So this is our mining house and our merchant bank has helped launch all of these. A lot of them are not around anymore. Five of them have been sold. What's left are two brand new companies we'll hear about today, Sun Metals and Discovery Metals, and two companies that have been around for three or four years, Liberty Gold and Pure Gold, and we'll hear from all of those CEOs today. They're all exciting stories with great investment attributes that hopefully you'll, you'll walk away understanding a little better. So what has this mining house delivered? We added it up over the weekend and we've delivered 21 million ounces of gold, 64 million ounces of silver, 2 billion pounds of copper and 134 million pounds of uranium. We've translated that into just under $3 billion of realized value. Okay, for an invested capital of 720, so we raised 720 million bucks, we've realized just under $3 billion of value for a four times multiple on investment. So uh, return on investment or multiple on invested capital if you're a private equity firm, four times, I'd be pretty happy with that if I was a PE fund invested in Oxygen and its companies. And within that, of course, there are your 10 baggers, your two baggers, you know, there's a whole range, but they average out to, to four. <clears throat> but we're not just in the asset flipping business, and I think that's an important point, right? This is not just about horse trading. Two of our projects in 2016 hit commercial production. Okay, so 2016 was a big year for, for our portfolio. In fact, Statistically, since 2013, there have only been seven new open pit heap leach mines built in the world. New ones. I'm not talking about restarts or retreads. These are brand new open pit mines. There's been seven. Two of them have come from oxygen. So the group that's up here presenting, the DNA that's up here presenting over the next hour is responsible for 28% of the world's new open pit heap leach mines since 2013. That's something that we should all be proud of. Here are, here are the two mines that came from our group. The Karma mine, which was in a company called True Gold. It hit commercial production in October of 2016, and we sold it to Endeavor Mining for $250 million after we poured our first bar of gold. So we built this mine. We took it from a PEA to a fully functioning operating gold mine in three years in West Africa at the bottom of the market. It was brutal, but we did it. Below Long Canyon, we sold this to Newmont in 2011. There's Moira's hands and her head looking at her vision in the bottom left-hand corner. That's Long Canyon as it sat with two and a half to three million ounces drilled off in 2011. And that's what it looks like today. Newmont put it into commercial production in November of 2016, a month after Karma hit commercial production. So these, I mean, these are interesting for a bunch of reasons. One, they're both open pit heap leach mines. They're in different parts of the world, right? So the same technology applies no matter where you are. Um, they're both built the first world standards. It's not like we did anything cheap and quick in, in Africa. They're both the same standards of quality. 
uh, across the whole range of, of, uh, of the business. And so fast forward to 2017, what's next? Right? So we've got this whole portfolio of projects that have driven value. We've got two operating mines that hit commercial production last year. What's next? <clears throat> I believe we've got the Madsen Red Lake mine will be our next operating mine in the group. Whether we put it into production ultimately or somebody else does, it doesn't really matter to us. We have to do the same things to it. We know exactly what to do, right? So we are advancing that through feasibility and final permitting within the next 12 months. And that ought to be our next mine in production, followed by Gold Strike in the Great Basin, which is our flagship project in Utah, driven by Liberty, which again is a past producer. And um, we think it's got all the hallmarks of our next open pit heap leach mine. So just coming back to risk, this is a story, a kid's book that I was reading to my son the other day, Sam and Dave dig a hole, right? <laughs> you know, it's, I was looking at it thinking, oh my God, this is exactly what the resource sector is like. You know, you're, you, work, you work hard and you make the wrong turn and you miss your diamond, right? It's not from lack of effort, right? But this is a risky business. The dog seems to know where it is, but I think Sam and Dave are just having fun. Um, so how has oxygen been able to do this so many times. I mean, anecdotally, nobody really knows what the odds are uh, of making a new discovery. I did a bit of research over the, the weekend, and it seems to be one in a thousand seems to be the number that people accept as the odds of making an economic discovery, right? So one in a thousand, we've done it seven times, right, over the last 15 years which is incredible. The odds of then taking it further and turning it into an operating mine, the odds are even less, right? You'll get hung up in permitting or social issues or price, commodity prices or whatever. Well, we've done it twice, right? So how is that possible? And the reason it's possible is because of our absolute laser focus on data-rich projects. We aren't focusing on projects that are necessarily green fields, we're focusing on projects that have been largely de-risked by standing on the shoulders of previous operators. It's not the first operator that usually makes a success. You know, the same could be said for real estate. It's usually the second or third or fourth operator that touches a project that has all the success. So we are focused on acquiring projects that have been de-risked from the point of view of is there or is there not a system here? Right? We know that these projects, all of them, have systems because they've been drilled before. Some of them have been in production before. There have been tens of millions of dollars spent on them, but they didn't work previously. What can we do to them to make them work? What's different today that wasn't the same 20 years ago? Lots is different, right? And one of the things that's different is that we... To quote Abraham Lincoln, if we had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend six hours sharpening my ax. <clears throat> and that's exactly what we do. We're not a, a business that goes in and twins a bunch of drill holes for a bunch of splash or is, is jamming the stock for a certain purpose. We spend years collating, synthesizing, analyzing, compiling historical data before we drill our first hole. Right? We did it at Gold Strike, we did it at Madsen, we're doing it at Sun Metals, we're going to do it at Discovery Metals, right? And it's our MO, right? We measure twice, we cut once, so to speak, right? So as we move into the projects like Madsen or Gold Strike, we have had years of compilation behind them. We've got a new model, it makes sense. We've got a new metal market. We've got a new mandate for management. The past operators might not have been able to drill deeper than 100 meters. Well, we're now able to drill much deeper than 100 meters because the price of gold allows us to pull a pit that goes down 250 meters instead of 100, right? So there's all kinds of opportunity left in these projects. And every single one of these projects, perhaps with the exception of Halila, which was a true virgin discovery and some of, of Michelin, like Jacques Lake, which was a true virgin discovery, they've all had some historical work. 
Long Canyon had very little work. It had some drilling and some trenching and some road building and obviously indications of mineralization, but not a significant amount of work. All the others have had a ton of work, right? So we're standing on the shoulders of these giants. The projects are de-risked. We think we can take them further than anybody has been able to take them in the past. So that's enough of an introduction. So these are the four companies you're going to hear from today, the four CEOs. Pure Gold on the Madsen Gold Project, which is one of the highest grade underground mines uh, through feasibility right now in the Canadian landscape. There's about 2 million ounces of 10 grams there on the eve of being fully permitted. Gold Strike is one of three open pit Carlin systems in the Great Basin that we control. And Gold Strike is our flagship project. We're very excited about it and we're uh, on the eve of our first resource. Discovery Metals is our latest public company and we, our flagship there is called Puerto Rico which again was a past producer and high grade uh, silver zinc lead system. And Sun Metals is still private and we're in the process of going public in the next three months and it's got the Stardust project in northern BC which is a high grade lead, zinc, silver, gold, uh, CRD system. Thank you.